Welcome back to Fast Movie. Today I will show you a disaster movie from 2020, titled Greenland. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. We see construction work being done on top of a massive building. Two men are talking about some delays, the one that's frustrated with the situation is the boss, John. Moments later, he's driving his car, listening to the radio about an interstellar comet that will fly by close to Earth. He arrives at a suburban neighborhood and walks up to a house, reluctant to go in. He enters a room where a woman is seen on a treadmill. That's Ally, his wife. They have an awkward conversation surrounding their child, Nathan, and his upcoming birthday party. The son arrives and is excited to see him. They go to his room and talk about a drawing he made of the coming comet, named Clark. As they're laying on the bed, it's revealed that the boy is a diabetic. They talk about John's separation from his mom. Later, the three of them are in a living room listening to the news about the comet. The interstellar body is moving fast toward Earth and is made up of many pieces of ice trailing behind it. That night, he's seen moving back in the house, taking a guest room. The next morning, a dad is listening to the news about the comet again. They're saying that pieces of the comet will fall on Earth, but that there's no reason to worry. While he's cleaning the grill for the upcoming party, Ally walks in and tells him that he needs to go to the store to pick up a few things. He takes his son with him and while still at the parking lot, everyone is looking up at the sky. They see the comet approaching. Inside the store, as they are shopping, John gets a presidential alert on his phone and then an automated call. No one else in the store is getting the same alert. He is informed that him, along with his wife and his son are chosen for emergency shelter relocation. The same alert is shown in the house TV, but Ally doesn't see it. John quickly leaves the store with his son. As they're driving home, he sees military vehicles and planes going the other way. When they arrive home, the people have already gathered for the party. John goes to talk to Ally in the kitchen and asks her if she got the same alert. She dismisses him, thinking it's just a test, but he tells her about the military he saw on the way, suspicious about what's happening with the comp. Both of them come back to the living room, where everyone is watching the news, expecting to see a part of the comet hitting the Atlantic Ocean. No one is worried as an image of the fragment is shown on the TV screen, and the kids start counting down. When they reach to one, waiting to see the splash in the ocean, nothing happens for a moment. There's a little earthquake and John walks out of the house. He sees a flock of birds flying away, when suddenly a massive shockwave hits him over, felt inside the house as well. He comes back in and everyone is scared, still listening to the news. The newscaster announces that the piece has impacted a city in Florida with a shockwave that was felt for thousands of miles. The city was completely destroyed. As an orbital shot of the comet hitting is being shown on the news, the people wonder if more pieces will hit the planet. John gets another presidential alert. The call plays on both his phone and the TV, so everyone can see what the message says. None of the others are getting the same message, which states that John can't take anyone else to the shelter, except his family. He gets a security code to enter the plane on his phone. The others leave in a panic. John and Ally are packing worried if they'll have enough insulin for the boy. The child asks about his grandpa. Ally is preparing food and listening to the terrifying news, as John goes to get Nathan, who says that the sky is on fire. Pulling out of the driveway, they see that none of their friends got the same call. One of them tells the family that the news is reporting that a huge piece of the comet, called Planet Killer, will hit the Earth in two days. As they are leaving, another neighbor runs to them, begging to take their daughter. John refuses and they drive off, arguing in the car that even if they did take her, she might have been turned away at the airbase. Later, as they are driving, people are seen already looting the stores. Suddenly, they drive up to a massive traffic jam on the highway and John goes the other way, taking a side road. They're listening to the news on the radio, saying that there have been more impacts and others are expected, which might take out entire cities or even cause an extinction-level event. They arrive at the airbase, being guarded by the military. People are gathered around the doors because they're not being allowed in. The family pushes trough the crowd and is allowed entrance with the barcode they received. Once inside, they are given wristbands for personal identification and are told to move all their things into one smaller bag. Suddenly, they realize the insulin for Nathan is gone and John goes to take it from the car. Ally goes to tell the soldiers about her husband, but tells them about the boy's diabetes and causes a problem. She's taken to a superior officer that informs her that someone with a chronic condition can't be on the plane. Ally tries to reason with her, but she gets turned down. She and her son get escorted out of the base. Meanwhile, John comes back and is headed toward the planes looking for them, 
unaware of what is happening. John boards one of the planes that's about to take off and tries to reach Ally, but can't. One of the passengers there sees the insulin and tells him about the rules regarding chronic illnesses. John panics and asks to leave the plane. Suddenly, the base gets breached and the people start shooting toward the military. The plane that John was existing has a fuel leak, so he tells everyone to get out and runs away. The plane explodes and causes a chain reaction. John finds out about his family being rejected, as the two of them are already back at the car. Nathan is already low on insulin. The chaos in front of the base continues, so John takes a while to get back at the car too. Once there, he finds a message from Ally that she's taking Nathan to her dad's place, so John goes after them. On the road there, Ally and the boy get to a pharmacy. She checks his blood sugar and they go to find insulin for him. Suddenly a gang walks inside and starts shooting, killing people all around. They manage to escape and get into a car with some people that will take them part of the way to her dad's. The couple allies riding with start acting strangely very fast. Eventually, they throw her out the car, take her wristband and drive off with her son, leaving her stranded on the highway. Meanwhile, John is lucky enough to find a ride up north as well. Inside the truck, John sparks a conversation with one of the men Colin, who tells him that they are headed to Canada where the driver knows someone that has a plane and can take people to the shelters. Apparently, the military has set up the shelters on Greenland. The man tells him to find his family and meet him in Canada, so they can take one of the planes to. Another one of the people in the truck eyes John's wristband and demands that John gives it to him, but when he refuses, a huge fight unfolds. The fighting causes the truck to swirl and crash, throwing the people from the back out. The fight continues regardless and John ends up killing the guy. Colin dies in the crash. In the meantime, Ally gets another ride toward the base where the people that took Nathan are headed. He is still seen riding with them when they get to the airport base. At the first stop, as they are showing the wristbands, the boy tells the soldier that those people are not his parents and the soldier gets them escorted away, taking him inside. Later, Ally gets there too and tries to find him, from one stop to another, from one medical unit to another. She finally finds him and she's informed that he's been given insulin. The nurse says she'll help Ally find a military transport to her father's city and that she will stock her with medicine for Nathan. John breaks into a house for some water and food. He checks the news immediately, only to see that the main impact is expected in just under 24 hours. He finds keys to the family's car and takes it, getting to Ally's dad fast. He finds him playing cards with his buddies, asking about his daughter. They decide to put their differences aside and work together to find her and Nathan. Meanwhile, the two of them arrive at a gas station and call the house. John and her father go to pick them up and the family is finally back together. All of them get back to the house and see that the information John got about the shelters was true. He convinces Ally that they should go to Canada and try their luck, so they prepare for the journey there. Unfortunately, they can't convince Ally's father to join them. Suddenly, a giant piece of the comet falls nearby, prompting them to go immediately. Ally's father gives John a gun and says his goodbyes, staying behind as they drive away. John and Ally reconnect during the drive, promising to stay together. They stop for a blockade along the road, when debris from the comet starts falling all around them. John drives out from the line of cars, but the fragments are falling everywhere. Ally gets in the back to cover Nathan, while John tries to find shelter. They stop near a bridge, where others hide as well, but John runs off to help a man out of a burning car. Later that night, they continue their journey and pass into Canada. While searching for the airport, they listen to the radio and discover that they don't have much more time until the biggest part of the comet hits Earth and destroys more than 75% of all living things. As they drive, they see one plane getting air and another almost taking off, so they chase after the second one. John stops the plane by driving right in front of him. The pilot is reluctant to take them in, since he is already at full capacity, but they succeed in convincing him. John has a dream about better times and when he wakes up they are approaching Greenland. The place seems unaffected by the comet, until a moment later a fragment impacts the water and creates a shockwave that hits the plane. Both engines are failing as the pilot tries to keep the plane in the air. They glide trough the air, landing smoothly, but hit the glacier. The pilots are pinned on impact, but John isn't able to help them. He sees a military plane land a mile away, so he shows the people from the plane there and when they arrive, a military truck takes them in and gets them to the shelter. As they are going inside, the planet killer hits. The impact will reach them in a matter of minutes and the people are still getting deeper inside the shelter. Once inside, 
they brace for impact and a flashback is seen of their previous life, when they were happy together. Nine months later, the planet is desolated. Cities ruined completely. A radio signal is searching for survivors and establishes a connection, informing the receiving end that the dust has settled and there is no radiation. The hatches of the shelter open and reveal that the family is still alive, facing the ruin of the planet. As a symbol of hope, they see a bird flying outside and start coming out of the shelter. As the Earth is seen from space, radio signals communicate from all around the globe. There are people still alive everywhere on the planet. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.